Finals SAQ43, Chronic Liver Disease A. List the commonest causes of chronic liver disease in adults. Commonest causes include alcoholic liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease caused by obesity or diabetes, and viral hepatitis B and C. Other causes include autoimmune causes such as primary biliary cholangitis and sclerosing cholangitis, metabolic diseases such as Wilson's disease, hemochromatosis, and alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, toxins and drugs, and right heart failure. B. Explain which systemic effects of chronic liver disease are of importance to the anesthetist and why. A thorough explanation of every possible systemic change would take too long to write. Stick to the core issues. A. Airway. Ascites increases intra-abdominal pressure and increases the risk of reflux. RSI and pre-medication with proton pump inhibitors are required. Respiratory. Ascites leads to diaphragmatic splinting, basoatelectasis, PQ mismatch, and reduced FRC. Ascites also causes hypotension, aspiration, and hypoventilation. Consider drainage and sodium and water restriction preoperatively. Perioperative removal of ascites will lead to post-op reaccumulation. This should be accounted for in fluid balance. Pleural effusions reduces lung expansion and reduces gas exchange. Consider drainage preoperatively. Hepatopulmonary syndrome, pulmonary AV malformations lead to right to left shunt and hypoxia. May be caused by increased production or reduced clearance of vasodilators such as nitric oxide. This increases shunt and shunt leads to hypoxia that cannot be corrected by supplemental oxygen. The patient may have platypnea and orthodeoxia. The only definitive treatment for hepatopulmonary syndrome is liver transplantation. All the above causes hypoxia. Cardiac. The patient may have hyperdynamic circulation with high cardiac output, reduced SVR and hypotension. Cardiac output is increased due to tachycardia and volume expansion due to activated RAS. Protosystemic pulmonary and cutaneous shunting leads to increased cardiac output. Cardiac output may increase by up to 50%. Reduced systemic vascular resistance may occur as portal hypertension leads to increased vasodilatory mediator action. Humoral and autonomic dysregulation leads to abnormal distribution of central, splunknic, and peripheral circulation. Low SPR may mask underlying compromised cardiac function. MAP should be maintained within 10 to 20% of pre-op values with vasopressors and fluids. Hepatic blood flow and oxygen delivery should be maintained to avoid exacerbating liver dysfunction. Portopulmonary hypertension may be due to local pulmonary production of vasoconstrictors. Portopulmonary hypertension, cirrhotic cardiomyopathy and pericardial effusions increases cardiovascular instability under anesthesia. Consider echocardiogram to diagnose. Propanolol reduces portopulmonary pressures. However, treatment with beta blockers may lead to perioperative hypotension. A low CVP may reduce the risk of varicell or GI bleed. Concurrent smoking is a risk factor for coronary artery disease, and concurrent alcohol intake is also associated with cardiomyopathy. Intra-arterial blood pressure and cardiac output monitoring can help optimize fluid and vasopressor use. However, transesophageal echocardiography may be contraindicated in the presence of varices. CVP monitoring is controversial but allows for centrally administered vasopressors and venous excess. Excess PEEP will increase hepatic venous pressure and ICP. Neurological Hepatic encephalopathy is due to toxic metabolite buildup such as ammonia due to deranged amino acid metabolism. Encephalopathy heralds decompensation and precipitants should be sought, such as GI bleed, infection, sedatives, hypoglycemia, excess protein intake, hypotension, hypoxia, trauma, hypoche, constipation, and acute liver failure. Enteral gas exchange is monitored and hypoxia is managed. Drop in GCS and loss of airway reflexes may cause respiratory failure. Grade 3 or 4 encephalopathy is an indication for intubation for protection of airway. Ventilation permits manipulation of ICP. Avoid long-acting sedatives in chronic liver failure. 
regular lactulose to prevent constipation. The West Haven classification of encephalopathy is presented here. Wernicke encephalopathy is due to thiamine deficiency associated with alcoholic liver disease. Ensure thiamine supplementation, gastrointestinal. Delayed gastric emptying due to ascites and raised intra-abdominal pressure increases the risk of aspiration. Consider RSI and aspiration prophylaxis or alternatives to general anesthesia. Varices and gastric erosions may occur. This is associated with blood loss and anemia. Ensure pre-op full blood count is checked. Esophageal Doppler is contraindicated in the presence of varices. Hematology Anemia may be caused by chronic blood loss from GI tract, hypersplenism-induced hemolysis, chronic illness or anemia of inflammation, and malnutrition. Check FBC and provide hematinics if indicated. Ensure anemia is adequately treated preoperatively. Coagulopathy may complicate chronic liver failure due to failure of synthesis of clotting factors and reduced clearance of activated clotting factors, platelet abnormalities and hyperfibrinolysis. The liver synthesizes all clotting factors except for factor 8. Coagulopathy may contraindicate regional anesthesia and LA metabolism by the liver may be impaired, risking LAST. IM and subcutaneous injections risk hematoma formation if Patient is coagulopathic. Consider vitamin K, reversal of coagulopathy with FFP, cryoprecipitate, and platelet transfusions directed by thromboelastography. Seek senior hematological advice. Ensure adequate provision is made for cross-matched blood and clotting products dependent on the type of surgery. Thrombocytopenia and platelet dysfunction may contraindicate regional anesthesia. Consider platelet supplementation if indicated. Chronic liver disease leads to reduced immune function. Patient is infection prone. Examples of infections include respiratory and urinary tract infection and spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Assess for infections and investigate as appropriate. Intraoperative antibiotic prophylaxis when indicated. Joints and skin. Careful with positioning. Skin may be fragile. Muscle wasting may leave patients prone to neuropraxia and pressure injuries. Renal. Hepatorenal syndrome may occur due to disproportionate reduction in SVR in relation to circulating volume, leading to poor renal perfusion and renal dysfunction. Tense ascites also impairs renal blood flow. Activation of RAS and sympathetic nervous system causes vessel constriction of renal vessels, leading to poor renal perfusion. Avoid renal insults in the perioperative period such as hypotension, dehydration, nephrotoxic drugs, and sepsis. Type 1 hepatorenal syndrome is rapidly progressive. Type 2 is slower in onset and is associated with diuretic resistant ascites. Hepatorenal syndrome carries a poor prognosis and liver transplantation may be the only definitive treatment. The diagnostic criteria for hepatorenal syndrome is included here. Secondary hyperaldosteronism contributes to ascites, effusions, and peripheral edema. Patients may be taking aldosterone antagonists. Metabolic Hypoglycemia may occur due to depletion of hepatic and muscle glycogen stores. Blood glucose must be monitored perioperatively, especially when under GA, to avoid hypoglycemia. Supplementation with glucose-containing solutions may be required. Monitor plasma potassium. Nutrition. Chronic liver disease is associated with poor nutritional state. This predisposes to increased incidence of post-op complications. Pre-op nutrition optimization may help reduce post-op complications. Ultimately, a risk-benefit assessment must be made in conjunction with the patient, hepatologist and surgeon to determine whether proceeding with elective surgery is warranted, if the degree of liver impairment is significant, and risk of morbidity and mortality are judged to be high. C. Outline the child pill scoring system and explain how this may be used to stratify mortality risk for this patient. The child pill score is used as a risk predicting tool for patients undergoing abdominal surgery, with a total score of less than 7 being child A. This carries a mortality of less than 5%. A score of 7 to 9 
is Charles B, which carries a 25% mortality. If total score is more than 9, this is Charles C, which carries 50% mortality. One year survival for Charles A is 100%, for Charles B, 80%, and Charles C, 45%. Components of the Charles Pew score include bilirubin, albumin, protrombin time, and cephalopathy and ascites. The following provides a score of 1, bilirubin less than 34 microgram per liter, albumin more than 35 grams per liter, PT less than 4 seconds, no encephalopathy and no ascites. The following provides a score of 2, bilirubin of 34 to 50 micrograms per liter, albumin of 28 to 35 grams per liter, PT of 4 to 6 seconds, grade 1 to 2 encephalopathy, and mild ascites. The following provides a score of 3, bilirubin of more than 50 micrograms per liter or more than 40 micromoles per liter, albumin of less than 28 grams per liter, PT of more than 6 or INR more than 2.3, grade 3 to 4 encephalopathy, and marked ascites. Regarding encephalopathy, grade 0, patient is alert and orientated. Grade 1, patient is drowsy and orientated. Grade 2, patient drowsy and disorientated. Grade 3, patient has rousable stupor and restlessness. Grade 4, patient is comatose and unresponsive to deep pain. Additional information. Chronic liver failure. There is impairment of liver synthetic and metabolic function, which is present for more than 26 weeks. This leads to fibrosis, cirrhosis, and portal hypertension. Chronic liver failure may be compensated or decompensated. Portal hypertension leads to engorgement of anastomosis between portal and systemic circulations, leading to varices at gastroesophageal junction which increases the risk of bleeding, hemorrhoids and dilated abdominal wall veins, aka caput medusae, impairment of hepatic synthetic function, leads to low albumin levels and plasma proteins, causing edema, ascites and reduced drug protein binding. Factors contributing to ascites include liver fibrosis and portal hypertension, salt and water retention due to hyperaldosteronism, low albumin and splunknic vasodilation. Spirinolactone long-term may exacerbate electrolyte disturbances and renal dysfunction. Patients with chronic liver failure present to the anesthetist more frequently than with acute liver failure. Physiological consequences of chronic and acute liver failure are similar. Patients with liver disease have high perioperative risk, which is proportional to the degree of hepatic dysfunction. Acute liver failure this is a process involving rapidly progressing liver necrosis and an inflammatory response with physiological derangement similar to sepsis. There is a triad of hepatocellular dysfunction, coagulopathy, and encephalopathy. ALF can be classified as hyperacute with onset within 7 days, acute with onset between 1 week and 1 month, and subacute with onset between 1 and 3 months. Active acute hepatitis is a contraindication to elective surgery due to high perioperative mortality. Patients should have all surgery postponed unless a true emergency until at least 30 days after LFTs have returned to normal. Treatment of acute liver failure is largely supportive. Specific treatments is indicated for underlying cause, for example, acetylcysteine infusion for paracetamol overdose, delivery of fetus for pregnancy-related acute liver failure, penicillin for amanita phthalates, chelating agents and hemodialysis for iron overdose, protease inhibitors for acute hepatitis B infection, acyclovir for herpes simplex virus infection, corticosteroids and immunosuppressants for autoimmune hepatitis, replacement of coagulation factors for coagulopathy, consider ICU or HDU level care if there is grade 2 encephalopathy or worse. Patients with encephalopathy, raised INR, hypoglycemia, or acidosis should be discussed urgently with a hepatologist in a specialist liver unit. Consider liver transplantation. The King's College criteria for liver transplantation is included here. Liver transplantation may be the definitive treatment in some severe cases. Anesthetic management of patients with liver disease. 
preoperative. Symptoms of liver failure include anorexia, malaise, weight loss, easy bruising, itching, and right upper quadrant pain. Signs of liver failure include jaundice, palmar erythema, spider nevi, caput medusae, gynecomastia, ascites, hepatospinomegaly, and testicular atrophy. Risk factors for liver failure include alcohol excess, IV drug abuse, obesity, autoimmune conditions, hemodialysis, hemophilia, unprotected sexual intercourse, and previous blood transfusions. Risk assessment may be via child's classification, model for end-stage liver disease or MELT score, which requires serum bilirubin, creatinine, and INR. Elective surgery is contraindicated in child PUC, MELT score more than 15, mortality is 40%. Proceed with caution in elective surgery for child PUB and MELT score of 10 to 15. Elective surgery may proceed in patients with child PUA or MELT score less than 10. Acute liver failure is a contraindication to elective surgery. Generic illness severity scoring such as SOFA and Apache 2 may be more accurate in acutely unwell patients with chronic liver disease. Surgical risk in chronic liver disease depends on the extent of hepatic impairment and the urgency and type of surgery. Common causes of mortality in the perioperative period include sepsis, renal failure, bleeding, and worsening liver failure with encephalopathy. Investigations Useful investigations include full blood count, coagulation studies, use and creatinine, glucose levels, liver function tests such as bilirubin, AST, ALT, ALP, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, albumin, and coagulation profile as mentioned, imaging studies such as ultrasound, ERCP, CT and magnetic resonance cholangiography may be considered, hepatitis screening for hepatitis B and C, ECG, echocardiography, chest x-ray, and ABG. Consider pre-medication with aspiration prophylaxis drugs. Sedative medications may precipitate or worsen encephalopathy and should be avoided. Intraoperative considerations. Anesthetic drugs in liver failure. Drugs safe in liver failure include lorazepam, propofol, thiopental, atomidate, desflurane, sevoflurane, isoflurane, nitrous oxide, atracurium, cis-atracurium, remifentanil and paracetamol. Drugs to be used in caution include midazolam and diazepam, anthurane, rocuronium, vacuronium and saxamethonium, fentanyl, alfentanyl, morphine and petidine, NSAIDs, lidocaine and bupivacaine. Drugs contraindicated in liver failure, possibly halotin. Effects of liver failure on pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics are included here for completion. This is referenced from Stewart's website, Ketamine Nightmares. Fluid resuscitation. Normal saline is recommended as the first line. Sodium bicarbonate may be considered if patient is significantly acidotic. However, high sodium load may worsen ascites. Hartmann's solution may present an external lactate load and increase lactate levels. If patient is hypoglycemic, addition of glucose-containing fluids is recommended. However, glucose-containing solutions are unsuitable for fluid resuscitation as it provides little intravascular volume replacement and may exacerbate hyponatremia and cerebral edema. Caution is required as over-resuscitation with crystalloids may worsen cerebral edema. Human albumin solution is a useful colloid, especially if synthetic liver function is impaired and serum albumin is low. Adding IV telepressin in conjunction with daily human albumin solution may improve renal function. Other anesthetic considerations have been discussed in the previous section. Post-op. Patients with advanced liver disease will need post-op intensive care or high dependency care. Constipating analgesics such as opioids should be prescribed with concurrent lactulose to prevent encephalopathy. Maximize opioid sparing analgesia. Post-op ileus may precipitate encephalopathy. Complications that may occur in the post-op period include delayed wound healing, sepsis, renal impairment, and bleeding. Causes of post-op liver dysfunction and jaundice include bilirubin overload due to hemolysis, hepatocellular injury, 
cholestasis, and congenital causes. Thank you.